times, but not with complete sincerity, but this time I'm very sincere. How do you follow that? <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Wembley. I'm pleased and proud to be here with you, recognising the work that's been done in kicking racism and discrimination out of football. The game as we know it today is not what it looked and felt like 25 years ago. Then it was a hostile place. If you're from an ethnic minority, I'm from a different religious background. Many of you will know exactly what it was like 25 years ago, and I'm sure all of you who didn't experience it firsthand will have heard the unsavoury stories directed to our players and their families. It was, remains, it was and remains completely unacceptable. No doubt Herman and Rodney will touch upon this landscape when they address you tonight. On Herman, may I have been the first to thank him for his tireless, devoted and unwavering commitment to fighting racism and the ugly side of football. <laughs> Kick It Out reaches 25 years, but he has been championing fairness, equality and justice for a lot longer. His leadership and consistent approach to highlighting poor practice and discrimination keeps us all alive of the work we need to do. Over the past decade, county FAs and local grassroots football clubs and leagues have supported many campaign activities on ridding football of discrimination. Some of those advocates are here tonight and I want to take this opportunity in thanking you for your support. At the FA, we're determined to continue our fight against discrimination and continue our partnership and funding of Kick It Out. From next season, we'll also be providing additional investment by funding two new positions at grassroots level to support counties with their community engagement programmes. That will be part of our new inclusion plan, which will be launched at the start of next season with clear targets and clear senior executive accountability. The plan highlights the FA's work across the areas of the game where we have direct oversight of changing the ethnicity and gender balance of our workforce, of the workforce of our national team support structure, ensuring we are inclusive across the grassroots game and continuing our campaign work supporting inclusion and diversity. Our inclusion advisory board chaired by Paulie Ayer will oversee this plan and monitor progress against the targets we're setting. So while I am delighted to be able to support Kick It Out and take a moment to recognise the organisation for 25 years of campaigning for equality in football, all of us here know that there's more work to do. It is all our responsibility to ensure the game is for all, and here at the FA we're committed to working with all of you and playing our part. I think also it's important to show what we've learned. When I was um, first involved in um, league administration after my time at Leicester City, I met with Herman, I met with Paul, and I met with the PFA and Gordon and to try uh, and understand why we had a disparity uh, in the appointment of black managers. There was a lot of pressure to put uh, uh, in place a thing called the Rooney Rule, which meant that well-qualified black candidates would get a chance to be interviewed. And there was a lot of reticence uh, amongst the 72 football league clubs to actually engage on this subject. They said, look, I'm not a racist. I employ the best candidates. I only want the person who can win games for me and uphold the reputation of the club. They all genuinely believed that and they were very reticent to change anything. And I asked uh, for a season to come back with some analysis and some proposals uh, for their support. And I got a grudging yes, okay, we'll talk about it at the AGM next year. And what we found, uh, I did a lot of work, I met a lot of um, uh, owners and uh, chief executives and chairs who appointed uh, managers. And I said, how do you appoint a manager? And they said, well, I've been around the game a long time, I talked to my contacts, my friends, etc. I said, and uh, who do they talk to? I said, well, they talk to their contacts and friends, and I get three or four people. <coughs> and I interview one, and I choose the best. And I said, um, does your circle of acquaintances, friends and contacts, include any black guys? And they said, well, not as such, no. I said, and the people they're talking to, does that include many black guys? And they said, well, no, not as such, no. 
So I said, so you've got an informal network which largely includes white people and you're surprised why you're getting white candidates for jobs all the time. And there was a sort of um, moment, a Paulian conversion, when the Football League realised its informal recruitment processes were just recruiting white Anglo-Saxon males 94% of the time. Not because there was a racist conspiracy, it's because no one had ever done the work to explore the problem. And the next year, 68 of the 72 Football League clubs voted to put the Rooney Rule in place. Because once they recognised the problem, they were willing to address it. Now there's a long way to go, but now we've got a position where the number of black coaches across the Football League is increasing. And is up about 30% year on year. What have we learned in the last two years I've been at the FA? I learned a very painful lesson uh, taught to me by a very brave black female footballer last year, which was a lot of well-meaning people can make some very, very, very bad mistakes when it comes to inclusion and diversity. We had a situation where we didn't have in place whistleblowing protocols that allow people to come forward and feel safe in reporting bad behaviour. Now, that's not a great place to be. And we uh, went through and said, OK, that we got ourselves in this position because no one felt safe to come forward and substantiate the allegations. That wasn't the fault of the accuser, because she was right. It wasn't the fault of the people who didn't back her up, because they were worried about selection and employment and all the other sort of stuff. And we learnt a really painful lesson that good, well-meaning people who are focused on in inclusivity, unless they have the right best practice whistleblowing processes, unless they have the right expertise, unless they have the right targets, unless they have the right oversight and scrutiny, can make bad decisions. And you know, when we went to Sport UK and Sport England and said, uh, could you give us the um, whistleblowing protocols that the other sports governing bodies use, they said, they haven't got any either. So we worked with Sport UK and Sport England <coughs> to put those whistleblowing protocols in place and share them with the other national go governing bodies to make sure that events like that didn't happen again. And we've had one other event in the last 12 months like that. The whistleblowing protocols worked. People came forward to support the accuser. And we got to justice and fairness a lot more quickly. So one of the things that I learnt in that lesson is good, well-meaning people without access to the right advice and processes can come to bad decisions. Not because they're bad people, because they're employing bad practice. So we um, have worked really hard with external advisors, with the Inclusion Advisory Board, and we've done a complete audit of all our processes, our ethnicity, our gender balances, how we employ people, what rate we need to employ people from different protected characteristics to get to be one of the best in the UK at being inclusive. And at the start of next season, the IPD <coughs> under Paul Elliott's leadership will announce those targets and we will be accountable for meeting them because we owe the community in which we live here fairness, inclusion, and to be representative of the society we live in. And to move on to another subject, we will be working with Kick It Out, uh, and we'll be dedicating one of our autumn internationals to them to start the process of being a beacon of fairness and learning the lessons that Kick It Out have taken the trouble to teach us. Thank you all very much indeed.